It didn't take a year. It, it, it came out more or less not long after it came out. Um, I went to their place and I heard the songs and I related to it straight away. Um, like, like the brother was saying, the lyrics, uh, not one of my seed shall sit on your sidewalk and beg your bread. Going back to uh, the Pacific Islands, my mother was a staunch Christian. She raised me and uh, my sisters up on the Bible. I learned to read and write in Niue from her, of the Niue Bible. And the old English that was uh, in the um, King James Version of the Bible was translated to the old Niue. So I speak that kind of Niue. Um, I was steeped in the Bible, I would say, because my, my mum brought me and my sisters up very strict, kept us close. Uh, the reason for that, my father died when I was six. My mother, a widow, raised me and my sisters in the ghetto of Newton. We later on moved into Ponsonby, which was another ghetto. At that time, a sole parent, the stigma that went with sole parent, no matter that it was a widowhood, um, we grew up with that kind of stigma. Going to school and not uh, uh, having enough money to pay for school trips and uh, things like that, and getting picked up by the collar and kicked off the bus because my mum couldn't afford to pay trips. So, you know, the anger and resentment was starting from then. Um, and I always take it back to 70 and 74. Uh, but it could be further than that, you know, what's in the heart, somehow or other, will come out. Yeah, so, um, I feel the same way with this country too. Anyway, with the reggae, I cottoned on straight away to the music. It's very Pacific. Caribbean islands is islands, and the Pacific, this is the North Island, and my parents are from the islands, so, you know, um, very similar. The oppression, as, as you know, the Caribbeans was a slavery uh, distribution point. Um, the Pacific Islands would have been the same. In Aotearoa, New Zealand, it, it virtually <coughs> is the same too. Because the slavery happened here. Your history, if you read your history, same thing. Whether it's mental or spiritual, slavery is slavery is slavery. Oppression is oppression is oppression. So having been brought up on the Bible then, and learning how to speak, read and write my own language, I would say I was very steeped in the Bible. I went to a Newton Central Primary School. I did well in English. I was ducks at that school. I went to intermediate school, Paul Fine Intermediate. I did well. I was ducks at that school. I went to Mount Albert Grammar School, school where Robert Muldoon, ex-Prime Minister, Brian Williams, a lot of good people come out of. And I got kicked out of that school because I had an effort. And uh, the headmaster called me up one day and said to me, oh, Ness, Ness, get a haircut. And I said, no, sir, my people have a history of, we grow our hair long, and uh, <coughs> this boy, being me, we have a haircut and ceremony. No need to get a haircut. So right then and there, I told them to get stuffed and walked out. As I was walking out, there was a group of students. There was an era where protest and uh, civil rights overseas and starting to happen here. As I was leaving Mount Albert Grammar School, a group of students, Parkia and a few more, were out the front protesting with placards, you know, racist school, racist school. That was my awakening to a political mind, a political attitude, apart from the spiritual that my mother had brought me up on. From then, I naturally progressed into a group called the Polynesian Panthers, um, which was based on the Black Panthers of America. And over the years, we, we were involved in a lot of things, did a lot of things to change or try to change 
uh, this society in Aotearoa. Uh, what we stood for was to fight against oppression, racism, um, and the injustices that we were facing as Pacific Island and Māori people in this country. What I learned from them was that Māori and Pacific Island people are one and the same. Māori came here first, we came here later. We are more or less cousins, distant cousins, if anything. My name is Tingilo. I know in Niue. I know in Māori it's Tinido. I know in Rarotongan it's Tinido. And in the other islands also there's a character like so. So I know the Pacific is the Pacific and we are in the islands here. Where does that bring reggae in? Well, when I first heard, heard reggae and this wild man with crazy hair and smokes a pound of marijuana a day, at that time in this country, marijuana wasn't very well known. Some of the older people perhaps, but it was very quiet and, and you know, because I suppose it, it wasn't acceptable, it was dangerous and there was all that propaganda about people going crazy uh, over drugs like marijuana. Well that era, as well as a, a, a political time of upheaval, um, it was also the psychedelic time. And in this country, the psychedelic came out of the music, in the young people, in the students, free love, that time. When I heard about Bob Marley smoking a pound of marijuana, at that time, us young people were just beginning to be exposed to Thai Buddha, Durban poison, and we were street people, we were street kids, 17, 18, 19, just out of school. We were coming into contact with psychedelic drugs. Mr. Asia was ruling. And contacts of ours were coming back from overseas, working on ships, young men, merchant seamen. That was the only kind of employment that they could get at the time away from the city, apart from labouring or, 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 or the doll. They brought back with them things from outside from outside the world. Like I was saying, it took a year for albums and stuff to come here. So, so times were moving and changing and we were moving with that. Marijuana. Green, New Zealand green then was um, very weak. What was coming outside was stronger. With the, the word that this black man with crazy hair smoking a pound of marijuana uh, um, us street people cottoned on to it straight away. Um, some in, in my lifetime have, I felt, gone astray. Those of us that have survived, and I'd say about 35 years now I've smoked marijuana, I've still got my wits about me. Um, you know, the, the propaganda uh, at the time, it'll drive you crazy in 10 years. You know, well, I figure this. Bob Marley came uh, to Aotearoa with his music first and then physically later on in 1979. Not only to bring uh, uh, a spiritual message, but also to help us free up and accept things that are truly uh, given to us for aid. Like, like in Genesis 1, right in the beginning, um, the word says that God give man her for use. Not abuse, use. So when I hear, hear Bob Marley and reggae, then i got to look it up because he's telling me uh, three o'clock roadblock. Uh, the things that, that weren't acceptable then, I found uh, through Bob, music, and the, the faith that he was putting out in his music. Sort of turned everything upside down, even the music. Um, marijuana is natural green, given by God, for man, for use. Uh, I, I understand in 
um, no, the anti-feelings and the propaganda too are put out about it. Um, the stand that Bob Marley put out about um, standing up for your rights. At that time in, in Aotearoa, New Zealand also, um, we were facing uh, uh, things that weren't acceptable today, like standing up for your rights, doing protest marches, squats, sit-ins, fighting the police, um, social injustices, those kind of things. Well, the music gave us heart. The music um, taught us that you know, we have to relieve the oppressed and plead for the widow. I'm, I'm a witness to that. Um, from, from Bob's music, uh, I further got involved in, in the political side of things, um, rebelled against what my mother had taught me, um, found out that Christ wasn't white after all. I think that was the biggest revelation to me, no? Um, so, so, from finding out that, I read the Bible again for myself, like how it was uh, revealed uh, through Bob again. Um, I, I find out that what he's saying is go and read it for yourself, find the truth for yourself, and that'll set you free. Well, it certainly has, um, till, right till today. Uh, like I said before, there's not enough time to to tell you about Rasta, um, although I think I'll give you just a snippet of it. Um, the others, uh, the other speakers too, will, will tell you more. Um, enough to say that uh, from, from that time until this year, last month, July 23rd, we still celebrate Rasta. 23rd of July is the birth of Christ, is the birth of Haile Selassie as Christ. Uh, not December 25th, which is another lie perpetuated by people that believe that Christ is white. Um, let me tell you, he's like me. Rastafari. <laughs> <laughs>